Greetings, bienvenidos, welcome to night two of Puerto Rico uh, here on Cliffy Land's Global Cooking Adventure. Uh, tonight, as we celebrate the finale of having uh, completed our 193 Nation Round the World Learn to Cook Challenge, available at cliffyland.com, we are celebrating for one week by cooking the food of my people, mi gente, Puerto Rico. Tonight is uh, night two, and this is part one of night two. We are cooking ropa vieja, which is a shredded beef stew. And uh, so we're gonna be doing this first part, and then we're gonna go away for about an hour and change, and then we will come back. If you're watching this uh, on YouTube, uh, this will all be joined together. Uh, so again, you can always go to cliffyland.com, find us on YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Pinterest, and Tumblr as well. We are simulcasting on um, Busker as well as on Periscope. That's my head. Uh, let me get my lens on somewhere where I seem to have lost it. Oh, that's fun. That's very fun. Uh, so, uh, let me get everyone situated, and if I can find my lens, I will be in uh, great shape. Uh, let me get you over by the stove. Uh-huh. Stay. And uh, we will flip you. Who? that's me. Hi. This is again Cliffy Land Global Cooking Adventure. You can find us at cliffyland.com. Uh, but right now I'm gonna get you up over the stove so you can get the bird's eye view of what is going to be happening. I'm gonna be getting both burners going for the ropa vieja in a moment. I need to make sure you don't fall down off the ceiling first. Okay, uh, one moment. Give me just one second because I think Okay, I knew I had my lens somewhere. Hi there. Again, we are on Busker and Periscope. We are working on our ropa vieja. We are going to start the cook of it, and then uh, it's going to stew for an hour, and then uh, so that hour we're going to go away, and then we will come back uh, after about an hour and 20 minutes when we will be doing part two of the cook. So, we have... Uh, our large stew pan and our smaller stew pan and I'm gonna put I'm gonna protect my busker people by sitting them in the cast iron skillet so they don't get hurt okay so whew. Uh, so in the saucepan here well, we're gonna get our spatula and we're gonna start mixing now I've done half of this recipe normally it serves about uh, six to eight people there are only two of us eating I can have some leftovers hey dad Ah, uh, so you're on Periscope, good. So we have our saucepan. And so we are going to add in, oh, sorry, I need to take pictures. The pictures are for the blog, again, at cliffyland.com. And so we're gonna add into our large saucepan one pound of lean stew beef. Uh, and, and not the plastic. Okay, and let me wash my hands, hold on. Okay, always have to have time for cleanliness. And so now we are going to add in, uh, like again, I've only done half of the recipe. So, uh, hey, thank you for the like there. And uh, we're gonna add in, this is seven and a half cups of water. It would be 15 cups of water if I was doing the full recipe, but I'm only doing half. And I only did half on the stuff. Uh, you are in Jupiter, yes. The town, not the planet. Um, in Florida, in case you're wondering where we are. Uh, so now we're going to add in, it should be one whole tomato, but I didn't have enough. Nice, yes, ha ha. Uh, and uh, it should be one whole tomato, but uh, I didn't get enough. So I have half a tomato. We're going to add the green, uh, one chopped green bell pepper. And uh, one whole chopped onion. And uh, these are three culantro leaves. That's C. Oh, I like the new apron. Yes. Uh, lovely, Kelly. So great seeing you. And you see how we have our new logo. You can go to cliffyland.com and check that out too. It's on the front of my apron. You can't really see it from up there. Uh, but this is culantro, C U L A N T R O. Uh, are you also on Periscope? Yes. Uh, Periscope people are up above. 
And the culantro is an herb which is similar to cilantro but it's with a U and it's a kind of a long leaf like a like about that long about that long it has kind of jagged edges and it's um uh, I mean it's eaten uh, all around the world but um, I only know it from Puerto Rican food and ironically having cooked the food of every country in the world this is the first time that I've actually gotten to employ it or the only country for which I've gotten to employ it so imagine that thank you for the like whoever it's very tiny type um, and uh, so now we're gonna heat this to boiling and that's gonna go for 20 minutes and I'm gonna tell you what's gonna happen because you're gonna miss the second part of this uh, what's going to happen is after 20 minutes we're gonna add in uh, these potatoes so this is a uh, about a half a pound of potatoes that have been peeled and quartered without the water. Uh, I'm only having it in the water to keep it from being um, browned. Uh, and uh, we are going to add in uh, pumpkin, cubed pumpkin. That's going to wind up going in. And then here's the interesting part. One ear of corn that's been cut into three pieces. Out of this world, hey! Um, now there's a reason that it is on the cob. Jupiter, yes, Jupiter, Florida. It's about two hours north of Miami, about an hour north of Fort Lauderdale, about a half an hour north of West Palm Beach. Who'll be there? Um, but, 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 but the uh, corn. There's a reason the corn is on the cob. Normally I would not eat corn on the cob. I don't like eating corn on the cob. I don't like big pieces of corn in my soup, even though this would be traditional to have it that way. Uh, but it's going to be cooked in there because after it has to be drained and then that has to be, uh, be put back into the broth so you wouldn't be able to do that if it was off the cob so that's why it's on the cob now it will not remain that way and then uh, we will be adding salt uh, to that and this is going to be the the soup part of this uh, after it's drained but that like I said this is gonna sit here for 20 minutes and then uh, it's gonna sit there for an hour uh, so I'm not going to turn off the stream and come back on uh, just to say, hey, we're dropping the stuff in and leave again. So therefore, um, I am uh, not going to come back for that moment, but we'll come back in an hour and 20 minutes for part two, where we will continue by draining this, uh, taking out uh, the parts that we will have added in, and the meat, reserving the meat, straining the broth to make a soup and then we're going to cook that over there with some green beans and such and then you'll have a ropa vieja so uh that is a very brief part one come back in an hour and a half for part two so sorry for a very brief stream but uh come on back and you'll see the rest okay thank you for watching come back uh bienvenidos welcome to part two of uh, night two of Puerto Rico, our bonus country, as we have uh, celebrated cooking uh, all the way around the world, all 193 United Nations member states last week. And as a celebration this week, we are cooking the food of my people, Puerto Rico. This is uh, night two of three uh, of cooking the food of Puerto Rico. Uh, we are making ropa vieja, which is a shredded beef stew. This is part two. Earlier we uh, started with part one. You can find that on the uh, Busker and Periscope sides and you'll find this entire broadcast in its entirety on our YouTube channel. Search for us on YouTube. Just search for Cliffy Land. Also on Wednesday you will find blog from Puerto Rico along with all the blogs for all the other countries we have done at our website at cliffyland.com. You can find us on YouTube, on Twitter, on Facebook, on Instagram, on Pinterest, and on Tumblr. Uh, thank you for the like, uh, Luke, I believe that was. Thank you very much. Now I'm going to flip uh, the busker people around. Hey there, and I uh, get you going right there. And uh, let me get you up over by the stove so you can see what's going to happen next. And then uh, Periscope people, hey there. This is me, I'm Cliffy. Uh, uh, uh. This is the Global Cooking Adventure. And now we're going to go over to the stove. Actually, you know what? I'm going to put you up over the prep station because we're not going to be over the stove for very long. So what's happening is that we had... Hey there, thank you for the hearts. Uh, Got to make sure you don't fall over. 
Okay. Hey there. So, uh, we have uh, here on the pot has been um, our stew, which you can't see, but it's been uh, on the stove for uh, about an hour and 20 minutes. Uh, about an hour ago, we added in the carrots, potatoes, uh, pumpkin, and the ham I forgot to add earlier. And now we are going to drain all of this um, through our colander and hopefully not splash it all over myself. Oh. Now there's a weird thing that's going to happen here. Uh, uh, uh. Uh, one of them is that my glasses have gotten steamed up. Whoa, and also everybody got all steamy up over on the camera. Uh, I need a spatula. That would be a handy thing right about now. It would be. Why don't I find it? I don't know why I don't find it. I know what I did with the spatula. But uh, we're clearing out this pot and then we're going to reuse it in just a second. And you'll see how. So putting that back on the stove. Now this is kind of weird. So what we're going to do right here is uh, once we've strained the broth, uh, we're going to take the strained broth and put it back into the saucepan. And uh, I'm going to need to do this in a few different movements here. So you come up over here and you sit right there for a minute. Now we have our broth and we're going to reserve three quarters of a cup of it, which is not that much. Great. I was hoping I'd be able to grab it there, but uh, we'll have to figure that out in a different way. Uh, that Now that that's a metal pot, experience has taught me to not grab that with my bare hands. So I'm going to take this broth that it's been drained and put it back into that saucepan. And then you're going to see what's going to happen next. This is the quote unquote soup part of the uh, of the broth, and uh, I will, I'm gonna be back with the other part of it in a moment, but hold on. Okay, so the strained broth goes back in, and then over here, uh, and I'm gonna move you back over the stove. So you can see we put the broth back in. Actually, you know what? You need to go in the middle because you're going to need to see both burners and you'll see why in a minute. Urrah. Okay. Hey there. Thank you for being patient, busker people. Okay. So we've put that back over there and now we are going to pluck from here. Um, you know what? I'm going to need yet another bowl. Yes, I am. I will use the same bowl here. Uh, from here, I need to take out the meat and put that over in this bowl for later. And then I'm going to need to take the carrots. Uh, hold on. They're not carrots. Sorry, that's pumpkin. <laughs> my mistake. I just see orange and my brain is going. I'm taking the corn out uh, and putting that separate because I'm going to take those off the cob. Uh, and that traditionally one would not do that. Uh, but I'm making the executive decision because I really hate huge pieces of corn in, uh, in a wet dish. It's just a personal preference. Um, so that makes it kind of untraditional. Uh, but this is the meat. The, uh, the ropa vieja means old clothes. And uh, so it's the shredded meat, so that's the idea, it looks like old clothes. That's why it's called the ropa vieja. Um, but uh, I need to take out the pieces of meat from here. And now that's meat here. Erk. And then, oddly, I need to take a picture of this also before I forget. Uh, and the meat looks a lot like the ham. 
So that makes it even more exciting. Okay, so I need to take pictures. The pictures again are for the blog. The blog is located at Clifty Land for these last several weeks uh, for our bonus countries uh, before we start the adventure uh, from the get-go again. Uh, we are going to be still doing the text blogs at cliffyland.com. Uh, but in the meantime, uh, we uh, then we're going to be doing strictly video. But now to here, we're going to be adding in the potatoes and this is really goofy I don't really understand why but this is I'm just following instructions uh, meat goes in the other direction and uh, the pumpkin and the potatoes uh, are supposed to go back into the water uh, ideally leaving behind the onion and uh, peppers uh, for some reason it doesn't want the onions and peppers in here it I don't understand why but you know that's there you have it because we're also supposed to put the, the ham back in so doesn't seem to make a whole lot of sense in fact it makes such little sense that I'm just gonna dump the rest of it in I don't care okay because I don't see a way to, uh, since the pumpkin has disintegrated over the hour that it's been in there. Uh, but I did manage to get the corn out, so there's that. So now I'm going to take the corn here and try to, uh, as best as I can, get the kernels off the corn. And, uh, wow, this is not the appropriate place to do that. Uh, okay, here. I don't know if you can see. You can't see. You can see. Thank you for the hearts, everybody. Mis compatriotas puertorriqueños, ¿cómo están las cosas por donde viven? My Puerto Rican people in the house. This corn kernel is very hot. I'm burning my hands. Like I said, normally there'd be a whole cob of corn in there, but no. Ow, hot. I don't want that. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and again, I apologize to anyone whose uh, comments I don't see as they fly away because I'm busy looking down while I try not to burn my hands cutting the corn off the cob here. Ow, hot. Okay, that should do it. In goes the corn. Uh, okay, let me wash my knife off before it gets all messed up. And wash my hands. Okay, so what's going to happen next is uh, we're going to bring this back to a boil. And then we're going to add in uh, the vermicelli pasta, which we have right here. And this is um, about three quarters of a pound. I cut this recipe in half, so it's a kind of vague amounts trying to approximate half. And then we're adding in salt also. And then we need to mix, mix it all up. and bring this back to a boil. And that's gonna um, cook for uh, 20 minutes. Meanwhile, we have reserved three quarters of a cup of the broth, which uh, hopefully is not too hot, which you see sitting here. That's it right here. So we have that, and um, I'm gonna let that cook uh, um, uncovered. So, because um, I, I really don't want too, I personally don't want too much liquid. Technically, it's a soup uh, that this is having, but uh, here's our meat. And what I'm going to do right now is using these forks, and normally I would be moving you to a, a different station for this. But uh, I'm going to shred the meat to get the uh, ropa vieja effect here with the two forks. Yeah.
Come on, get shredding. How's everybody doing? Como están las cosas por donde está? Ahora puedo sacar el acento puertorriqueño, no me. Otra vez se lo puedo esconder si, si quiero, pero. Ay bendito. Like I said, uh, if you are new, um, I have uh, just completed my global cooking challenge where I uh, learned, taught myself to cook by cooking the food of a different country in alphabetical order one country a week, going around the world from Afghanistan to Zimbabwe. Sí, ropa vieja. Um, and uh, I uh, started in, uh, about four years ago doing a dish from Afghanistan. You can go to cliffyland.com. And you can see uh, the what happened uh, in all 193 weeks of learning to cook by doing the world alphabetically. Uh, also, you can go to our YouTube channel, just search for Cliffy Land, uh, that's my handle, and you will see uh, the introductory video, which will explain everything. Uh, right now, since we have cooked all 193 countries, we are now going uh, doing the bonus countries that were not United Nations countries. Uh, and starting with uh, my native Puerto Rico. And then we'll be doing uh, the uh, Kosovo, Palestine, uh, Taiwan, um, Vatican City, uh, and uh, maybe Western Sahara. And then take some time off before we come back and start the global cooking adventure from A to Z one more time, which will be a journey of redemption to see how uh, much I've learned if I can improve on things that I screwed up, reproduce things that I did well, or pick entirely different dishes. Uh, Boricua, si! Familia! Um, uh, see if I can need to do entirely different dishes because I picked the wrong ones in the first place. You never know. You never know. So, ropa vieja, yes, I just got off my mom's my mom. She was saying, eso de lo cubano, eso de... But I was like, no, no, entonces, uh, this is from the, uh, the Bible of Puerto Rican cooking, the book called Comida Criolla, or in Spanish, or in English, Puerto Rican cooking. Uh, the book has been in print since the 30s. And uh, this is, uh, like I said, the, the Bible of Puerto Rican food. So uh, I, the, one of the problems is that some of the most traditional dishes that I really would want to make, you can't really make for two people. Uh, like a roast pork, a pernil, you can't make a roast pork for for two people. Um, and patele, you know, uh, the, the meat pies, you can't make for two people. You have to make like 24 of them. Uh, you can't just make two. So uh, that limits what I can do. So I, that's why I decided on the ropa vieja and cutting this recipe in half at that. So hopefully I did okay. We'll see. Trying to shred this as much as I can. Okay. Okay, I think I've got a decent shred going here. In fact, uh, when I was talking to my mom just earlier, I was just mentioning this uh, episode of Sanford and Son, TV show from the 70s, where uh, Gregory Sierra played the uh, Puerto Rican neighbor, and he's cooking ropa vieja on the stove, and Fred Sanford, crotchety old man, comes in and says, what is that? And he says, it's ropa vieja. It means old clothes. He goes, yeah, well, it smells like dirty socks. So, there's that for you TV buffs. Okay, so now that we have shredded the meat, I need to take a picture of it to prove that I have indeed done so. And now, uh, into this saucepan. Uh, well, hold on, let me move this out of the way. We're going to heat this sucker up. And once we've heated it up, I'm going to brown the salt pork in this pan. And uh, I think I have everything I need, yes. And then, so we're basically making the sofrito uh, of sorts uh, to go um, be mixed in with the beef that I just uh, took care of over here. So I want to get that uh, nice and hot before I try to brown the salt pork and I would have turned on the burner before except uh, I was sitting here and I didn't want to burn my hands so that's gonna be over here while or quote-unquote soup now the weird part about this recipe is that the book does not say uh, 
like how to physically serve it. Uh, so logic, history, and personal experience suggests that it is, you know, the soup part goes on the bottom, and then the meat sofrito part goes on top, and it's going to be served in stew bowls. So that is what is going to happen. There is a little weird thing with the um, with the names because uh, if you tuned in on Friday. Uh, when we made our grand Puerto Rican uh, celebration, where I made piñon, uh, gandul jasopao, and then salada tropical. I made piñon, which was a uh, sort of Puerto Rican lasagna made with plantains and spiced meat, which is phenomenal, by the way. Um, the uh, rice and pigeon peas. Uh, however, um, gandul jasopao uh, suggests it's a the, the word suggests it's a stew. And the weird thing about it is, though, that it wasn't really like a stew. It was like rice and beans. There wasn't anything wet and stew-like about it. So the fact that this is called a stew um, is perhaps a little bit misleading. Gandules, así mismo. Uh, we also have uh, abichuela tierna, uh, green beans, here that are going, going to go into this as soon as we get this part going. Okay, that seems hot enough. So now we're going to very quickly saute the salt pork in here. It's going to give us a little bit of fat into which the uh, rest is going to go. And that's all the stuff that we have over here, which you can't see. But you will see as it goes in. Okay, that's too hot. Turning it down. Okay, way too hot. Okay, just trying to quickly brown, get a little bit of grease coming off of the pork. What's in the other pot? This is the, uh, the soup pork. So this is uh, potatoes, uh, pumpkin, um, ham, uh, corn, and uh, vermicelli pasta. I'm used to having it with rice instead of pasta, but this is, this, like I said, this is from the Bible of Puerto Rican cooking. So no one can accuse me of not being traditional because this is the book. This is the official reference point. So just saying. So we are, uh, okay, we've rendered that down a little teeny, teeny, teeny bit. Uh, so now we're gonna add in the diced ham. Boom. Diced onion. Diced green bell pepper, and I didn't have enough tomato to be honest, so I have uh, ha actually half a tomato, it should be a whole tomato, and uh, tomato sauce to make up the rest. And we're going to turn that down to a lower heat, and we're going to stir this until it is softened. Maybe I should point you in this direction. So this is a, a sofrito of sorts. Sofrito is a, a base. You can buy a sofrito in a jar at a Latin market. There's a, different kinds of green sofrito, um, which is more herbaceous. Uh, sofrito is going to be sort of a, a cooked down uh, peppers and onion mix, uh, oftentimes with um, a spice mix. Your camera will melt. Yeah, um, it's been kind of okay. It's been, it's been okay. I've done this before, but yeah, it's it's okay. I'm I'm high enough away. But thank you for the concern. Um, so we're trying to soften this down for a few minutes, and then we're going to add the beef and the reserved broth, and then the green beans, and we're just going to cook that uh, just for a little bit. No cilantro. No, there's culantro in here. Culantro in this. So, uh, yeah, it is weird though. Uh, sofrito normally will have culantro or cilantro, They're, or sometimes both. Uh, they're different herbs, they're, they have similar names. I, from what I read, people suggest that they have similar flavors. I don't think they have similar flavors. I think they're very distinct and very different flavors. They're both very cool. What is culantro? Culantro is an herb, it is a green herb, uh, it's about mm, about yay long, 
It's long and skinny, like uh, but thicker than a blade of grass, and it's kind of jagged along the edges. And um, it, uh, it's kind. I mean, I, I encountered it in a number of different uh, cuisines around the world, but didn't actually come up with the option of having um, a recipe with it. My mom grew it uh, by the side of the of the house, and when she, you know, want to cook something with it, she say, "Grab me some." Uh, it's called ropa vieja which means old clothes, but it's a shredded beef stew, uh, which is stew-ish. It's not really stew. This is the, 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 the water part of it, the, the quote-unquote soup part of it, and this is going to be the quote-unquote meat part of it. Well, not quote-unquote, because we have actual meat, which we cook down and shredded over here. Um, but this is, uh, like I said, the sort of sofrito part. Ah, okay, we got to move. We need to move in and add in the beef right now, because we're almost there. So the green beans are going to be very al dente. Um, they're not going to be really cooked down because we're adding the meat in here and then we're going to add in the green beans which we chopped and trimmed earlier. Uh, this actually should, would be from the recipe from a can with the water but uh, we're using fresh which is going to mean these are going to be crunchy. So we're going to bring this to a boil and then basically serve it. And that's going to be it. That's, that's, that's all there is to it. We're coating this nicely. So these are going to be basically raw green beans. It's going to give a nice crunch to go with the shredded beef. Uh, and uh, a person with a brain, meaning not me, uh, would at this point be tasting their food. So uh, I'm going to try to be a person with a brain and then try to taste it real quick. Here goes. Here we go. Mmm. Mmm. Mmm, that is good. Now I'm not going to add more salt because there's plenty of salt in this over here. Um, so, and I, and, I, and I do mean plenty. Um, so let me just double check on the salt level on this sucker over here. So here we go. Don't burn your mouth. I'm going to turn the heat off on that. Okay, wowzers. Ah, hot. Burning. Again, normally you'd have the whole, you know, one third of a corn cob shoved in there. But personally, that's the thing that I hated growing up. I hate, oh dear, I totally forgot to add the, this. My bad. Oopsie doopsie. Totally forgot to add that. There we go. So I'm just waiting for that to come to a boil and then we're going to serve. Ruh -ruh. It happens all the time. You know, I used to totally freak out over little mistakes. Um, and, and in a huge way, I would freak out. Uh, but now, you know, I've read that, uh, you know, when I started reading certain chefs saying, listen, everything is about making mistakes. If you don't make mistakes, you're not going to, you know, you're not going to experience cooking. Hmm. Very good. I made the wise choice of not adding salt there. Because this has enough salt for both of them. So, that being said, uh, let me move my knife out of the way. And uh, we'll move everyone to the plating station because it's time for dinner. So hold on while I get my screwballs out. And then we will get to plating. Uh, one Mississippi. Uh, where do these scoops disappear to? I am losing things right and left. Okay, here we go. So, oh, hey there, hey there, hey there. So we're gonna move over to the plating station. And, and there you go. We turn off the heat and we're gonna get to plating the ropa vieja. I'm sorry, uh, the white balance is a little weird right now, but uh, we'll fix that. So this is first gonna be the quote unquote soup part which has got the tomatoes and potatoes. Now I, I did the, 
I made the executive decision of just going ahead and dumping everything else back into, into the bowl uh, that included the green peppers and onions because it seems stupid to try to pluck out, you know, softened pumpkin from something just to avoid having other green peppers in it. That just didn't seem to make a whole lot of sense. So here we got you, and uh, we'll have a teensy, teensy bit of leftovers over there off the heat here. And uh, we're gonna add in the beef. This, the ropa, we have the actual beef on there. Put a little more meat in on top. Ta-da! We'll give you a closer look. Hey, I'm sorry, busker people. You should have said something. I was like, where'd you go? Well, I had you in front of me a second ago. So, uh, uh, uh. And a little more of the beef. Going in there. And uh, maybe a tiny bit more. Yeah, there. Ta-da! And the more leftovers for you. Okie dokie. So, ladies and gentlemen, we have our ropa vieja over here for you. Very nice. So, that is the shredded beef with the potatoes, pumpkins, uh, green beans, uh, corn, and such. So, muchísimas gracias por estar conmigo. Many thanks for being here on the adventure. Again, uh, you will be able to find everything on our YouTube channel. Uh, just search for Cliffyland, uh, search for Cliffyland on YouTube, and uh, please subscribe to our channel. Also on Wednesday, you will find a blog post with pictures, links to the original recipes. Well, actually, I'm going to have to write out the original recipes, because for once, it's not from the internet. And uh, information about the country, or in this case, uh, Commonwealth slash territory. And uh, tune in on Tuesday for night three of Puerto Rico. So uh, that's going to do it for us. So thanks for tuning in. We got to eat. It's getting late.